Now let's learn how to use a voltage divider to measure a thermistor's resistance. Recall that a voltage divider takes a fixed voltage and divides it down using two resistors. Here's my voltage supply VDD to ground. Thermistor serves as one of the resistors and we also use a fixed value resistor R. The voltage produced by the voltage divider is the voltage across the fixed resistance divided by the sum of resistance connected to our supply times the value of the supply voltage connected across those two resistors. I'm going to apply a little bit of algebra to solve for the thermistor resistance R sub T and we get this equation. As you look at the equation you see that there are three contributing elements R, VDD, and V sub T. V sub T is our primary measurement while the other two serve as auxiliary measurements. The resistance R can be measured with an ohmmeter but make sure you do that before connecting the resistor into the voltage divider. You cannot use the ohmmeter once the resistor is in place. Now let's investigate how you can select the value of the fixed resistor R to maximize your measurement sensitivity and measurement range. Take another look at the voltage divider arrangement. Here's our output V sub T and it's a fraction of the total voltage V sub DD. Let me write that as a fraction this way, V sub T divided by V sub DD. Next, I'd like to write the thermistor resistance relative to the fixed resistance. Do just a little bit of algebra arrangements here. Note that the fixed resistance has dropped out in three different places and we're left with this expression. And this equation relates the percent full-scale reading to the normalized thermistor resistance, that is normalized relative to the fixed value resistor. Here's a plot of the percent full-scale output as a function of the normalized thermistor resistance. If 100% at the top, and then as the thermistor resistance varies, we see that we drop from 100%. Now let's take a look at this notion of sensitivity. Generally, we want to have the most sensitive reading we can get, and that says that we want more voltage change for a given temperature change. Since we're talking changes, it's really talking slope. Any place where we have a high magnitude slope translates into high sensitivity. Here we have medium sensitivity, and here we have low sensitivity. In addition to maximizing sensitivity of the measurement, we also want to maximize the available range of the measurement. And that means we'd like to have a usable voltage change on either side of our nominal temperature. As an example, suppose the fixed valued resistor is selected to be much larger than the thermistor resistance at its nominal temperature. Well, that gives us this asymmetrical output range, meaning that as the temperature swings back and forth around the nominal temperature, we have a fairly limited range as it tries to go in the colder direction. As another example, if we pick the fixed valued resistance to be the same as the thermistor resistance at the nominal temperature, then we have an equal amount of range on either side. That is, we can swing up to 100% and go down to 0%, and the nominal temperature is right there in the middle. And for many applications, choosing the resistance R to match the value of the thermistor resistance at the nominal or midpoint temperature is a good strategy. It's not the only way to do things, but it's often the case that this works for your application. Now let's take a look at how the thermistor resistance varies as a function of temperature. We'd like to see how this impacts our voltage divider equation. 
Here's a typical negative temperature coefficient thermistor which has 10K ohms at 25 degrees C. Let's try applying this rule at several different nominal temperatures. If we have an application where we're generally working in room temperature, the thermistor has a resistance at 25 degrees of 10 kilo ohms. And that means we should choose the fixed valued resistance to also be 10K. Now supposing in a different application you're working on the inside of a freezer for example. So we'd say in this case the nominal temperature is 0 degrees C. As we project up we see that the thermistor has a resistance of approximately 40K. And that means we should choose our fixed valued resistance as 40K as well. In this way we maximize both the sensitivity of the measurement as well as the measurement range.